In this video, we'll look at how to shoot long exposures at twilight. During this time of day, the level of light is often so low that our exposure times can stretch out to several seconds. But what if we want to stretch things even further? By using a combination of camera settings and a neutral density filter, we can push our exposure times to tens of minutes or more. This kind of extreme exposure length can have a wonderful effect on slow moving clouds, as these next series of shots show. The first shot was taken with a shutter speed of 1.8 seconds. A close-up shows the clouds are fairly detailed and sharp. A 20 second long shot has a similar level of detail in the clouds. At 75 seconds long, we begin to see some nice blur in the clouds, but there's still detail in there. Finally, at 13 minutes long, the slow moving clouds have been completely blurred into attractive streaks. So, a very long shutter speed of several minutes or more at twilight can work wonders over slow moving clouds. When setting up for this, a tripod is essential to keep the camera still throughout the exposure. We need to set our exposure to manual and shutter speed to bulb mode, so that the shutter stays open for as long as the shutter button is engaged. A cable release is also essential, as it allows us to lock the shutter open when in bulb mode. To work out how long the exposure needs to be, it can be useful to take a quick test shot at a high ISO. Here's mine, shot at f16, ISO 6400, with a shutter speed of 1.3 seconds. This gives me a rough starting point for some exposure calculations. Using an app like PhotoPills here, I can come up with an equivalent longer exposure. So if I drop the ISO down to 100, then the equivalent shutter speed would be 1 minute 23 seconds, which is pretty long, but I want more. So I also calculate for a three-stop neutral density filter, which increases my equivalent exposure length to a whopping 11 minutes 6 seconds. So after fitting my three-stop ND filter and dropping my ISO to 100, I engage the cable release and lock the shutter open, using the stopwatch on my phone to time it. Even after using the exposure calculator, the right length is a bit of a guessing game, as at this time of day, half an hour after sundown, the light levels will drop during the exposure length. I tried to time my shot so that the light in the sky would balance with the illuminated windmill. This meant waiting around until near darkness. So to account for the fading light, I added in a couple more minutes to my exposure, settling on 13 minutes total. And here's the finished shot. So there we go, that's how to shoot super long exposures at sundown for beautiful blurred clouds.